guys, I'm back with another topic. Um, a lot of you have asked me, why does the narcissist want to remain friends with me after a discard or a breakup? Now, I dated my narcissist for a year and after the final discard, we didn't hear from each other. It was a lot going on and it was really messy and I didn't hear from him for a few months. And unfortunately, I was the one to break no contact and I reached out and I told him that I forgave him for just all the crap that he put me through pretty much. And so we talked for a little bit at the beginning of last year for about a good month or six weeks or so. And we didn't date, we weren't official or anything, but we were just talking and, you know, hooking up and whatever, just kind of starting to rekindle the chaos that ensued the last year which was silly on my part i regret it but we as victims tend to go back and we shouldn't beat ourselves up over it people don't often understand and they think we're silly and they give up on us for doing so but i don't think anyone ever ever will understand the price you pay for being a victim as or being a victim of a narcissistic abusive relationship people just will never understand what it's like until they're in it so, one of the really interesting things that I found whenever me, you know, whenever I put my foot down this last time when we're talking because I saw some things that just really reminded me of why, why it was a bad idea in the first place. Um, I told him this was a mistake. No, we're not doing this anymore. <laughs> I should have learned my lesson, you know, the year prior, but one of the things that was very interesting was that he called me, you know, I had all his numbers and pages blocked. He, I was trying to do no contact again, and he called me from his work phone number, and he said, hey, can you unblock me? I wanna talk. I said, okay, fine, sure. So I did, should have, but I did. And he basically had a little bit of small talk, went on about his birthday just happened, and his birthday dinner or whatnot. And keep in mind, he already had a, a new source of supply anyway, so he was already talking to her or whatever, dating her. And uh, he's like, well, you know, can we at least be friends because I told him I didn't want to talk. I told him I didn't want any type of communication anymore because, you know, fool me once, fool me twice, fool, fool me a thousand times, it's too much on me. So he asked me if we could remain friends. Keep in mind, I was never this guy's friend in the first place. We were never friends. We went through one year of abuse together and then, you know, six months after that breakup, you know, I reach out to tell him that I forgive him and that I'm sorry too for whatever, because as a victim, you tend to blame yourself. And yeah, so no, like, like we were never friends. Like I, there's no way that I can just be friends with the next, because even so I told him that it wasn't a good idea because what if we dated new people and you can't just be friends with someone like that because you'll end up cheating, you'll end up being tempted, you'll end up having this person bug you or even try to ruin your current relationship. So don't do it. It's a bad idea to be friends with your ex. But why do they want to be? Well, simple enough. They want what you can give them. You are a source of supply. You were a source of supply. You will always be a source of supply. This is why the narcissist keeps a garage or a harem of old exes. This is why they run back to exes. This is why once you're an ex, you're always gonna be an ex and they will always try to come back and hover you. So, yes. <laughs> I know that during our one year relationship when we were actually dating, um, he would reach out to his ex-girlfriend, the one prior to me, various times I'd catch him and you know, it's just, it's true. And he even still reaches out to her today you know, I'm friends with her and she's told me times where he's still tries to talk to her and it's been three years since they broke up, I think. So it's just, it's just crazy. They will never forget you, <laughs> even though you wish that they would. So back to this harem of exes. So one thing that narcissists are known for is recycling their exes. They keep you on the back burner when they're with shiny new supply over here. Once shiny new supply isn't so shiny anymore, they put them on the back burner and they put you up in the spotlight, you see. That's why they like to maintain a friendship with their exes so they can use you whenever you want. It's not to develop or to hold a solid friendship with you. It's not about that, it's about what they can use you for, which is sex, money, attention mostly, and validation. 
insecurity. Narcissists are the most insecure people in the world. So if they think that they can still keep you as a friend, maybe they're not such bad people after all. So they can say, look, yeah, me and me and ex Amanda, let's say her name's Amanda. Yeah, me and Amanda, we're still cool. We're friends. See, I wasn't the crazy person in that relationship. You know, it's just don't do it. Please don't be friends with them. Whenever I said, no, no, we're not doing that. We got the phone. This was earlier this year. And uh, we got off the phone and I blocked his number back and I have not heard from him since. So it's been nine months, over nine months. It's been really nice because I let go of that toxic person. I'm now engaged to someone who actually deserves me. I have a really nice guy and I'm in a healthy relationship. So it feels really good. So just think you can get over him you, or her, whatever, if you're narcissist, male or female, doesn't matter. You can get over the narcissist. It might not feel like it because the trauma bond is so great, but I swear to God, take time. Don't, don't contact them. Go no contact and things will get better and you will meet a better person and you, the narcissist will be history. I promise you, it doesn't feel like it. I know it was really hard for me to get over it. And I'll do another video on how I got over the grieving process, but just know, why they want to remain friends and simply don't do it. Bye guys.